God. God is the origin and purpose of life. He is important to us because He is the way, the truth and the life. God is a mystery, not because He is a problem for you to solve. He is a mystery because He is bigger than what you try to say about Him. It is in the image of this mystery that you are made. You are not just a number, a label given by society or voted for by others, nor are you what social trends call you. You are made in the image of God, the image of love. Just as we get to know our parents by living with them and acknowledging their authority, we get to know God by living with Him and acknowledging His authority. Those who want to separate you from your family would try to convince you that you don't belong or to persuade you to deny their authority. Life is not about surviving. Life is only appreciated because it is beautiful. If life were about surviving, then everyone would be thinking of themselves, caring not for others, but for themselves, taking advantage of others, and life would be very ugly. What makes life beautiful is love. This invisible love that is in everyone's soul and cannot be destroyed is the image of God. Some say that all this nice talk only makes people dream about a heaven that does not exist. They assert that just like everything in nature, when you die, your dead body simply gets recycled. The fact that you can look at the cycle of life and death from outside and at the same time know that you are in it means that you are bigger than the cycle. This is because you have the bigger life in you. You have God. In order to live life fully, you need to be truthful to yourself. The first question is, how do I know what is true and what is untrue? Many people tend to start with something they have accepted as trustworthy for them to check the truthfulness of other pieces of information. The question is, how do you know that your foundation is genuine? It comes down to the issue of trust or faith. When you take someone at their word, you accept their points of view. If you are lucky to trust the right person, who knows what they are talking about and who trusts you, then you will be led to appreciate better the truth and become one with it. If you trust the wrong person, who may either know what they are talking about but don't want you to know, or who don't know their subject, then you have a recovery from falsehood to make. The word recovery is used here because living in falsehood makes you sick, preventing you from finding fulfillment in life. In order to find your way back to the truth, you need to pay attention to your sense of fulfillment. Finding your life fulfilled is not the same as having pleasure through easy options. You may find junk food tasty, but it doesn't make you healthy. Some people convince themselves that if they take easy options, they would be on the opposing side to the truth. The fact that you can distinguish right from wrong and have the freedom to choose means that you are above them. If you were either one or the other, you wouldn't be able to choose. The absolute truth means that your option for truthfulness is the only way to find fulfillment to your life. Truth is what really exists. Falsehood is not the opposite of truth, but the absence of the truth. Just as a lie is not real, falsehood does not exist. Just as a liar chooses to live in a lie, a person who chooses falsehood chooses to end his existence. The option for the truth is the only way to find fulfillment to life. This choice is not for a dead thing to be shelved or kept safe on a pedestal. The way is lively and dynamic. It is not the running of software, nor a mental exercise, but an active participation in a life that is so well harmonized that there is no tension, division, or conflict between heaven and earth, visible and invisible, inside and outside, conscious and subconscious. 
In this harmony, God is acknowledged as truly God, and human beings can be fully human. In this harmony, cycles of life work smoothly for the well-being of the whole, seasons with their climate and temperature change in a well-balanced way. There would be no fear of hunger, no fight for territories, no fear of death, not because you will lose the sense of hunger or no longer need shelter or will not die, but because these will no longer be able to prevent you from being the image or reflection of love. The commitment to follow this way is known as faith. It is a commitment to do the right things in life in order to be yourself. If God, as the way, the truth, and the life, is so perfect, how come there is imperfection in life? How come there are hatred, conflicts, divisions, and wars? There are two kinds of suffering. Both can make you grow. One is a kind through which we learn more about nature and ourselves. The other is one by which human stubbornness and selfishness tests God's nature, His patience, and His love. In the first case, we grow in appreciating nature with our senses, including those of pain, which prevents us from hurting ourselves so that we can live in harmony with nature. In the latter case, we misuse our freedom and make ourselves master of the universe since we convince ourselves that nobody is in charge, only to find out that we mess it up with pollution, disharmony in natural cycles both inside and outside of our bodies, and distrust between ourselves. This is what we call sin. The consequence of sin is a life not fully lived, which is death. This kind of death makes us zombies with no love and no spirit of truth in us. Just as zombies cannot save themselves, we cannot save ourselves. Even though by sinning we turn our back to God, who is the way, the truth, and the life, God does not abandon us. He comes to our rescue and leads us back to Himself by becoming a human being with a life which began with a humble birth. God does so not simply by setting examples for us, but by uniting Himself with us, making us one with Him through His birth, death, and resurrection. Whatever God does to save human beings is called a mystery. Not because you cannot say anything about it, but because it is too big for you to say everything about it. It is called a mystery because it tells us something about God and invites us to join in with what God is doing for us. The mystery of God uniting Himself with us, coming to live among us as a human being, is called the mystery of the Incarnation. In this mystery, God asks us to live out His teaching, to allow Him to help or to give Himself to others through us. In our human history, God did so by asking Mary to become His mother, to give birth to Him, and to give Him the name Jesus. In our own life and heart, each of us is asked to do what Mary did, to live out God's teaching, to allow Him to do the right things for others. When we agree to do so, we become united with God in such a way that whatever we have to go through in life, we have Jesus dealing with it in God's way. In order to help us do what Mary did, God helps us with His power in us, the Holy Spirit. Normally we depend on right conditions to do the right things, being smart, eloquent, in the right time, at the right place, having the right amount of time, meeting the right people, having the right weather. When we allow the Spirit of God to work in us, we don't have to depend on these conditions, but work through them, even death. When we talk about God as our origin, we come from Him and go to Him. We talk about God the Father. When we talk about God coming to live among us, we talk about God the Son. He is the Son of God because He leads us back to God the Father. He is also the son of Mary, both in the Bible and in each person. When we talk about the power of God working in us, 
to lead us through our ups and downs in life, through life and death, to a fulfilled life, we talk about God, the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are known as the Holy Trinity, one God, three persons. This is a mystery because it tells us something about God and invites us to share in the life of the Holy Trinity. Every time we make the sign of the cross or when we say the glory be, we profess our faith in the Holy Trinity, the way, the truth, and the life.